So today we're doing an experiment on a concept called chromatography. And to do that, the first thing we're going to be doing is testing which of our mobile phases separate some of our known compounds the best. So we have some food dyes here, and these are going to be our samples that we test on the chromatogram. I'm just gonna put a couple of drops of food dye in each of these wells. And this is why you wear gloves. Trying to not cross contaminate things. To prepare your actual chromatograms, our stationary phase is just going to be these pieces of filter paper. Um, to prepare those, you'll put your baseline, just a line across the bottom. You'll need it about a centimeter and a half, maybe two centimeters above the bottom. The important thing about making your baseline is you want to make your baseline in pencil. If you make it in pen, pens have inks and inks have dyes in them. So if you make it in pen, you'll just get these huge swaths of, of pen ink. So I've drawn my baselines across the bottom. I've also put some little hatch marks to show where each of my samples is going to go. So to make these, I need to take the micro cap, which is really just a little thin glass Tube. So all I need to do is touch one end of the micro cap into the sample I want and then touch it to where I want the sample to go on the chromatogram. You don't want to hold it for too long um, because then you'll end up with these really, really big dots that you don't need. So, I mean, a dot about that size is plenty. If you get it really big, then you end up with something that you won't be able to measure very well. If you get it too small, you might not see any actual separations. So we're going to do that for each of our samples. So once we spot all of our samples onto our baseline, what we're gonna do is add some of the solvent we want to our beaker. The big thing is you don't want your solvent to be above your baseline. So you wanna make sure that in this case, the solvent's below that baseline mark. So the first one I'm gonna add is some 2% saline. Um, again, there's not a specific volume you need, you just need it to be below the baseline of your chromatogram. Same thing with the ethanol and the rubbing alcohol. After we run these chromatograms, we'll figure out which of our mobile phases, which of our solvents, works the best. And we can use that solvent to test our unknowns, which is the real goal. Okay. 
So once we've spotted all of our samples then, and filled all of our beakers with our solvent, the next thing we need to do is get this chromatogram to stay up. So what we need to do is we need to roll it into a cylinder. However, we need to be careful that the edges of our chromatogram don't overlap too much. If they overlap too much, then the solvent will move up it, up the chromatogram at really weird angles and it'll be very difficult to measure any of your things afterwards. So you get a nice little cylinder with a gap between the edge. Now that we have all of our chromatogram cylinders, we can set them in their solvents. And we also want to cover the top um, with aluminum foil or saran wrap because it helps saturate the atmosphere with your solvent, which really just allows the chromatogram to move up better. So what we're going to do at this point is we're just going to watch these and when the solvent front gets towards the top of the chromatogram, we'll go ahead and pull it out, unhook it, and go ahead and let it dry. So for this one, the solvent started to get towards the top. So we'll go ahead and pull it out. And unhook it, maybe. So that we can lay it flat. There we go. Um, so let's go ahead and start measuring this one. So all of your measurements are gonna start from your marked baseline where your dot was spotted. And many of these have split into multiple components. So this is where you wanna make sure you know what sample you had where. So I probably should have marked these before I put them on, but that's fine. I know what order these are in. So for example, green, because it has split into yellow and blue pigments, I need to measure both RF values. So I'm gonna measure from the baseline to the front of that dye component, which is about 3.65. That was for the yellow component of green. The distance traveled by the solvent in this case is about 7.90. And I can get my RF value from that. Because there is another component here, I still am measuring from the green sample, but now I'm measuring to the blue dye component and from baseline, again, from baseline to the dye, not from dye to dye. That one moved basically all the way up to about the 7.9 mark. And because my solvent front is pretty even across all of them, then my solvent front is going to be the same distance for all of my components. And that's for the green sample, so now we can move on to our yellow sample. There's a very faint pink dye in here that I'll go ahead and include in my numbers. It didn't make it very far. Made it only about 0 0.90 centimeters. The yellow dye from that one though did move up to about 3.9.
then you can move over to the blue die that has both a red and a blue component. The red component is about 0.85 centimeters. And the blue component also went basically to the top, so about 7.90. And finally, we have our red dye. And the red component from this one looks a little different. It's smeared out much further. So I'm gonna measure to the end of that one as well and get about 3.85. And that's all of our distances for saline. And what we can see from the saline one is it seems to separate pretty well. I'm going to leave that one there. These two, the solvents haven't really moved past about the halfway mark in a while. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just pull them out because they're not going to make it to the top. and the rubbing alcohol. So for the ethanol, most of them, it basically looks like everything went all the way up to the top. Um, our solvent line is pretty flat, so our solvent front is going to be the same distance. And the interesting thing is in this one, for green, whereas for uh, saline, we had a blue and a yellow component. We don't really see the yellow component in this one. Uh, there might be a very tiny one at 0.3. And the blue, as well as the solvent front, goes up to about 4.50 centimeters. We move on to yellow. This time, the we can kind of see the yellow component a little bit, up at about 0.70. And there is a slight pink component. It's hard to tell exactly where it is, but about there at 1.9. The blue dye in this case is just blue that goes all the way up. And the red is just a red component that goes all the way up as well. So that's all of our distances for ethanol. Now, last but not least is rubbing alcohol and it looks like basically none of those moved off of the baseline at all. So the solvent front is pretty even at about let's see, 3.95. Our first component, the green dye, really only has a blue that's very, very faint at about 0.45. The yellow dye, in this case, 
did not, we do see the sample, but the sample did not move off the baseline, meaning the distance is zero, or 0, 0.00. If for whatever reason we had a sample that we did not see a sample at all, um, then you would write that as NA, meaning it's not present. But not present versus moving zero centimeters are two very different data values. So blue, in this case, moves to about 0.7. And red has a very faint component, but it does seem to go all the way up. So that's how we get all of our measurements for these. Now, I know we haven't calculated the RF values yet, but it's already fairly obvious which of our solvents worked the best. Rubbing alcohol, basically nothing moved off the baseline or did very, very little. Our ethanol, basically everything moved up to the top. So that's not gonna be helpful. So our saline is the one that actually gave us the most uh, separations. And that's the one we're gonna want to use for our unknowns. If we were to look at the RF values, what we would notice is saline also has the most varied RF values. So what we're gonna do is do the same thing just with our unknowns. We've drawn our baseline, we've spotted them, we'll put them in the saline, and the pictures and data will be available.